Hi, I'm Anson McLaughlin, a PhD student at Northeastern University. I'll be presenting Recovering Lexically and Semantically Reused Texts, work with Shabin Shu and David A. Smith, also from Northeastern University. When composing a new document, writers often repurpose material from existing texts. In this paper, we study methods for local text reuse detection, detecting localized regions of lexically or semantically similar text embedded in otherwise unrelated material. So as seen in this figure, in this problem, we have a pair of documents, a source on the left and a target on the right. And we're trying to predict which portions of the target document have been derived in some way from the source. A common version of this problem is plagiarism detection, where the source and target documents could be student essays. At a high level, these problems boil down to comparing the text of the source and the derived documents and trying to infer some sort of fuzzy alignment between subsequences in both of them. These alignments don't necessarily have to be exact copying, but could try to capture you know, other forms of reuse, such as paraphrasing or summarization. So from a modeling perspective, we have two different input documents, the source and the target, split in sentences. These two documents are then fed into the model. Then the model outputs some sort of score or prediction for each of the target document sentences. These scores could range from the sentence being original content unrelated to the source, to a paraphrase or a summary of the source or on to the other end, you know, exact copying. We experiment with four classes of models for this task. Unsupervised lexical overlap metrics, neural passage encoders, hierarchical neural models with pre-computed frozen embeddings, and slower fine-tuned BERT-based uh, pairwise neural models. So focusing on the lexical overlap metrics first, we look at two different metrics. TFIDF and Rouge. We test them in two different settings. The all pair setting on the left, we compute similarity scores for all source sentences and target sentence pairs. And then we make a prediction for each target sentence as the max score over all the pairs. So you get the TFIDF encoding for target sentence I, you compute its TFIDF, its cosine similarity to all the different source sentences, and then you take the max score and that's your prediction. Then there's the single pair setting where you just compute the similarity score between the entire source document and the single source target sentence at a time, and you use that prediction uh, as a prediction for each target sentence. So this closely re resembles the information retrieval setup, where your source document is the document you're trying to retrieve, and the target sentence is your query. For the off-the-shelf neural passage encoders, we use the state-of-the-art sentence BERT models. These are BERT-based passage encoders that have been fine-tuned on a variety of related tax, tasks, such as semantic textual similarity, paraphrase detection, and information retrieval. These models are not trained specifically for text reuse detection, but since these other tasks, such as paraphrase detection, are so similar to our proposed task, we decided to experiment with how they performed. We test them in the same all-pair and single-pair settings. So you know, compute an embedding for a source document or a source sentence, and compute an embedding for all the target sentences, and then you know, compare their cosine similarities, and that's how you make a prediction for each target sentence. Next, we test three hierarchical neural models from prior work. These models, much like the sentence BERT models, compute embeddings for each source or target sentence by pooling over token embeddings. However, instead of just computing the similarity between these pooled sentence embeddings, these models contextualize them using document level LSTMs and then have some sort of cross-document attention layer to compare the sentence representations between the two documents. Finally, they make a prediction for each target document or sentence using these contextualized and attention-weighted representations. Finally, we evaluate just a standard fine-tuned Roberta model. So unlike the previous models I've talked about, these models don't use frozen networks to pre-compute a single representation for each source or target sentence. Instead, they're fine-tuned on pairs of passages. So just using the standard BERT sequence pair input, sequence A here is the target sentence, and sequence B is the full source document. You just you follow the standard fine tuning setup, add a final uh, linear layer on top of the CLS token, and we use that to make the prediction for that target sentence. Then the final model we test is another Roberta based model, the long former model, which can handle substantially longer sequence input sequences uh, than just standard Roberta. Uh, due to this increased input length uh, limit, we can actually fit the full target and the full source uh, documents as input. So what we do is we split the target document up into sentences. 
we add a special token uh, to separate each one of those target sentences, fine tune the model uh, just as normal, except for rather than just pulling out the representation of the CLS document, we pull out the representation of all those special token separator, special sentence separator tokens for the target document. And then we just add a linear layer on top of those to make a prediction for each target sentence. We test these models on four different data sets. The first is a press release to news data set. Here, the source texts are press releases and the target works are news articles that reuse press, that reuse content from those press releases. The next two are citation localization data sets. These are scientific article data sets where the source documents are abstracts of cited papers and the target documents are sections and papers that cite that source. Citation localization consists of identifying which sentences in the target section, if any, contain a citation to the cited source. All citation marks, however, have been removed from the text. So the models you know, can't just identify citation marks to make prediction. They actually have to compare the language of the source and target documents. These data sets are created by iterating through papers in a large corpus of scientific articles, finding sections in those papers that contain citations to another paper in the corpus, and then pairing together the abstract of the cited paper with the section in the citing paper that contains the citation. Negative examples can just simply be, be created by sampling you know, a citing abstract, a cited abstract or a citing section where there's actually no citation relationship. These data sets follow the assumption uh, that the citing sentence uh, in the target document often paraphrases or summarizes some portion of the cited paper, which is in turn summarized by its abstract. Finally, we have the PAN data set, which is a plagiarism detection data set where we have web documents where the source document has potentially plagiarized some content uh, from, sorry, where the target document has potentially plagiarized some content from the source. This is a synthetic data set generated by methods such as back translation, sentence shuffling, and word replacement. We evaluate models in two different settings, the document level and the sentence level. At the doc for the document level task, we're evaluating as document pair uh, classification using F1 score. So a positive document level label for a source target pair indicates that the target document reuses some sort of content from the source. A negative label indicates no reuse. Then there's the sentence level evaluation where we're evaluating the quality of the model's predictions for each target sentence individually. This could either be a classification task over sentences, so derived or not derived, or a ranking task where the model ranks the sentences in the target document by their you know, predicted level of derivedness from the source, and we evaluate that ranking. So here's a high-level summary of our results across all these different models and all these different data sets. One, we find sort of not surprisingly that the fine-tuned uh, you know, base models uh, have the best performances across almost all data sets by a, a fairly uh, decent margin. Second, we find that incorporating document level context via the long former does not actually consistently improve, improve results over just standard Roberta. Third, we find that the actually the strongest baselines in general are just the standard simple lexical overlap baselines such as TF-IDF. Fourth, we find somewhat surprisingly that the sentence BERT models actually perform uh, fairly weakly on this task, uh, worse in general than the lexical overlap baselines. And fifth, fifth is that these efficient hierarchical neural models that use these feature-based embeddings actually offer a very limited improvement over simple lexical overlap baselines and are often slightly worse. Since time is limited, I'll go over one of these findings in more depth, specifically the sort of surprisingly weak performance of these off-the-shelf uh, paraphrase detection uh, sentence BERT models. So these uh, sentence part models are you know, fine-tuned on related tasks, paraphrase sections, semantic textual similarity, or the like, and are promoted as being sort of these general purpose off-the-shelf uh, passage encoders. However, as you see in these four bar charts that shows the performance across our four different data sets, the sentence part models in yellow actually you know, don't outperform, have you know, a roughly equal or slightly worse performance uh, than just the standard lexical overlap baselines, TF or IDF or Rouge, in green. And this holds across all of our different data sets. We find that these results span both data sets such as, as PAN, where um, 
uh, there's really actually fairly high lexical overlap between derived target sentences and the sources they adapt. And data sets such as ArcSim, there on the bottom left, where much of the reuse is less literal. So there's a lot more paraphrasing and summarization. So even in these sort of harder instances where you'd expect you know, the lexical overlap baselines to perform worse, sentence BERT does not outperform them. So in conclusion, we suggest practitioners to take one of two approaches. So in the setting where you have minimal labeled training data to train a BERT-based model, or where most of your reuse contains it is mostly exact copying, uh, or you know methods with high uh, word overlap, then just go for the standard lexical overlap metrics. TF-IDF does a pretty good job. But for applications where you have large scale labeled training data and where much of your reuse is non-literal, so summarizing or paraphrasing, uh, this is where you know a, a neural model might actually be useful. If you have a really large data set, then it might be useful to uh, filter possible pairs uh, with a lexical overlap metric, such as TF-IDF, and then run your more expensive fine-tuned BERT model uh, just on those filtered pairs. But if your data set's a lot smaller, then you could just apply the fine-tuned BERT uh, on the whole data set. Uh, this, this suggestion of first filtering with the lexical overlap metric and then running uh, the fine-tuned BERT model closely resembles uh, the uh, current approaches to neural information retrieval, uh, where the neural models only re-rank a smaller list of documents already retrieved by your cheaper lexical overlap metric, such as TF-IDF. Thank you very much.